50K from line of credit to policy year one. Pay back line of credit from policy loan year two. Add expense from negative cash flow. Wash repeat? Question mark. Is there a better way if trying to fund a policy using the bank's money. Thank you, sir. Okay, it sounds like a bit of a dangerous concept there, right? Let's write it out. Let's figure what the hell JP is trying to say here. What's this man thinking? He's trying to, he's trying to duke the concept the concept is already duking people, but this guy's trying to like duke it twice. He's like, I'm gonna duke the banks, I'm gonna duke the concept, and I'm just gonna like da da da, you know, let's see if it works. So he's saying line of credit, 50K. Maybe the line of credit is higher than 50K. I mean, I think it's uh, unwise if I had a 50K line of credit and I chunked the whole 50K. But let's just say that he does that. So he's saying 50K into a policy, 50K. What needs to happen? 5,000, right? Needs to go towards the premium. Well, let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. First of all, depending on your age, health, and income is going to determine whether the insurance company is willing to do this or not. So you have to have the income, the health, and age you have to have all three, we all do, right, to uh, get approved for such a number. So the insurance company is going to ask you, well, where is the money coming from, right? So if you don't have existing capital, the amount of income to actually pay that, they're not going to let you do it. They might approve you for 30K, right? And if your health is poor and you're age, if your age is older and health is poor, then they really might not do it. Okay. So there is a qualification process from the insurance company before they actually take your money. Understand? So that's that. Um, so if we're taking all of this line of credit, because they're going to, uh, they're going to see, okay, you make, you make 30 grand a month, you'd make 30 grand a year. You make 40 grand a year, you make 50 grand a year. How are you possibly going to afford putting in to a policy 100% of your income? It doesn't make sense, right? So that might not work for you. But let's say you are making more money. Now, typically, if you're making more money, most people have capital and assets. So you know, it wouldn't make sense to actually, you know, borrow all the money. That's why we stick to that number. 66% range gives us a boost. We're not going too crazy, right? But let's say it was able to work. Somehow, company said, yeah, we'll do it. We'll take a risk on you. So you take 50K here. Now we have a debt for 50K. And so basically, we would need the right income, expenses, probably no debt. We need good cash flow to be able to pay back the line of credit. But what he's saying is 50K minus 5K is 45. And then with the OIT expense, right? The one year term insurance and the PUA. Mm, let's say he's got, let's say he's got 43K to work with. And then remember 43,000 can only borrow 90, 95% of that money. 43,000 times 90%, say 38,700 to actually borrow from. So let's say he borrows, let's say 38,700, he borrows to, to pay back the policy. I mean, to pay back the line of credit. Does that work? Let's see if this guy is on to something or he's just, you know, curious. If I, uh, if I take out loan, so cash value and then policy loan, 
we have a policy loan for 38,700. I have 43,000 in there, paying 6%, earning 6%. Let's see, 38,700 times 6% is 2,322 dollars. So at the end of the year, he'll owe 2,322 plus 38,700. So he'll owe $41,022. Over here, we have 43,000 minus 38,700. So 4,300 of the 43 is earning, say, 5.5%. So 236, 50 plus 2,000. 2322 plus 23650 plus 43,000 in original cash value at the end of the year one. Maybe my cash value will be somewhere around that number $45,558.50. So I might have that amount in the first year, and I'll have this much in policy loans. On the line of credit, I took out 50K minus 38,700. So I owe 11,300 on the line of credit. So as long as you have the velocity banking to basically pay this 11,300 back in time, Right, so you do velocity banking for however long to bring that to zero. And then what was he getting at? And then he said, he said okay, so he said 50K from the line of credit to policy year one, pay back line of credit from policy loan in the, well, you should have said year one, right? So, so you put it in and then immediately borrow to pay it back. So that's the first year. Now I'm approaching the end of the year. This could work as long as you don't have really any debt. Um, shouldn't take me that long to pay back 11,300, dumping all my income and expense in the line of credit. Year two, year two, you have to decide, am I gonna pay this back 50K? Or do I leave the policy loan outstanding for 41,022 and then just add another 50 in. So let's say he did it again, the year two adds another 50K in. Could that make sense? Let's say in the second year, his cost of insurance would go down a little bit. And once you get past years one and two of the policy, policy will start to perform a lot better. So you have to get past the initial expense in the beginning years. So let's just say conservatively, the second year, I do not pay back the 41,022 in policy loans. And I add another 50K to the anniversary date, the new, I add a new 50K in. So 5K goes towards premium, pays the OIT insurance, the one year term life, pays my paid up additions, rider fee. And then let's just say I have another exactly 38,700 in there. So 38,700 plus that 45, 58, 50, okay? What did I do? 38,700 plus 45,558, 50 cents, 84,000. 84,000 to 58. 50 is what my new cash value would be for the beginning of year two. And then since I borrowed another 50, he's saying to now go ahead and, and, and uh, you know, borrow whatever I have in cash value. So 84,258.50. So I guess I don't have any debt, nothing going on. And I'm simply just like, you know, just throwing as much money as I can in there and I'm paying it back, borrowing from it. <clears throat> so to recap, 
43,000 was the starting cash value, let's just say, in the beginning, the first year, I borrow 90% of what I have in cash value, 38.7, to dump it back in the line of credit due velocity banking to bring it to zero. By the anniversary date, I'll uh, go ahead and add another 50 in there, 50K. Um, and then we said 38,700 the second year round, like the same amount, let's just say starts cash values being conservative. Uh, so I have 84,258.50 in total cash value, but $41,022 in policy loans. So what I actually have available to borrow from is 43,236.50. And then I said 43,000 236.50, take 90% of that is 38,912.85. So I do a second loan for 38,912.85 to basically pay back the line of credit again. To velocity banking till you hit zero should hit zero fairly quickly and then you could maybe pay some of the policy loans back so now you'll have 38,912.85 times well let me add it all up 41,022 plus 38,000 Nine twelve, eighty-five. So you'll have in the second year seventy-nine thousand nine thirty-four eighty-five in policy loans times six percent four thousand seven hundred ninety-six nine cent. 4,796.91 plus 79,934.85, So you'll be paying 6%, earning 6% on what you have borrowed out. And then, hmm, I don't know, can that work? Am I allowed to have that many policy loans and have it be more than what I have in, let me see, 84,258, 50 times 5.5%, 5 .5%, 4,634, 4,000, would that work? 84, 258. 50 plus 4,634, 892.50. I don't know, it's kind of close, man. So I think, to an extent, it might work. But you would have to be very on it. You'd have to be like really, really on this thing. And I guess the way it works best is you basically max fund the policy using the bank's money right and because we then borrow from the policy at the beginning of that year or as a beginning I start the policy to stay ahead of the interest that I'll get charged over on the line of credit by knocking that down and having to maybe pay interest for a couple of months so that interest plus the interest that I'm getting charged versus what I'm earning it, it could potentially work, but you know, it's like skating on thin ice. You know, what if, I don't know, you lose your job or you have an emergency, there's, where's the leg room? 88 and 84, yes, this number will always be less than that number because whatever you're getting charged in interest, even with the compounding effect, you have to understand that your money is also compounding on all of the money that you initially put in there. So you would stay ahead 
um, you'll start breaking off eventually. You'll start, you know, it'll, it'll get higher and higher, the, the separation from year to year. But then I guess, you know, you fund it for maybe five years, seven years doing it this strategy and then turn it into reduced paid up and then just pay yourself back over the years. And then you have a big fat line of credit to work with. So, I, you know, it could work in a perfect world where there's no issues, you stay healthy, uh, nothing's wrong with you, no emergency, no kids, no family, no, you know what I mean? Like maybe this would work great for single people, but um, I don't see it working so well for majority of people. And you have to understand this like the way I understand it. So you need to be able to operate this better than how I'm writing it out right now. Because there's probably more pieces to the puzzle that I'm...